Well, <clears throat> I want to talk about um, predatory practices of medical doctors and hospice. Um, there was an article that came out, and they said that the, the cost of Medicare um, payments to hospice has gone up 70%. I mean, how much new technology do you need to change a depends diaper on somebody in hospice? How much money do you need to spend to put your finger in their carotid artery to see if they're alive and their heart is pumping? Um, hospice is a place where you're supposed to make uh, somebody who's in the process of dying comfortable, at least um, dying in humanity as opposed to uh, being taken out in a ditch somewhere and hit in the head with a stick, right? And so hospice is supposed to be a nice, quiet place where... Uh, death, uh, the, the inevitable end of all of us, is going to be at least a comfortable, dignified thing. But the cost has gone up 70%. Why is that? Well, because medical specialists are kind of losing sway. Uh, the average primary care physician and family doctor is no longer referring patients out to specialists because they're not getting paid by Medicare, so they're keeping these difficult cases which they used to farm out. There's no law that says they can't prescribe the same drug or um, specialist prescribed. There's no law that says they can't ask for tests by radiology labs and other laboratories that specialists do. And so they've begun to say, well, gosh, I don't need to refer these people out. I'll just keep them myself. What happens is now the specialists usually have somebody on the inside of a hospice, and they say, okay, uh, Grandma Daisy here. Uh, his fourth stage colon cancer has gone to her brain. She's in a coma. She's got days or weeks to live. And the family has signed off on a do resuscitate farm for Grandma Daisy. So if she has cardiac arrest, uh, she stops breathing. Uh, we are instructed now to resuscitate her, make every effort to keep her alive because there may be some new drug coming along in the next couple of weeks or month. And we want to keep her alive long enough, whatever we can, uh, to, to take advantage of any new technology. Well, um, the doctor there, the hospitalist, the person in charge of the the uh, hospice, and he may be making rounds between five or six different hospices, and then he will email all his golf buddies and say, look, uh, Grandma Day's in the hospital. She's got $300,000 left in her private medical funds and her Medicare fund and her Social Security, and so let's go to work, boys. We, Grandma Daisy's got days or weeks left to live. So they will come in. Remember, she's in a coma from fourth-stage colon cancer gone to her brain, and they will do a double mastectomy on her. They'll do a double hip replacement, double knee replacement. They'll do a hysterectomy on her. They'll do cataract operations. They'll put implants into her brain so she can hear better. Uh, they will uh, take her thyroid gland out. They'll pull her one tooth she has left, do an upper and lower dentures, and on and on and on. Every technology they can do, when they get down to one cent left out of that $300,000, they stop. They pull the plug, and they call the family and say, you know, Grandma Daisy had a rough night. And what I want you to do is come get her body because we need the bed. Now, you say, Wallach, you, you've got to be exaggerating here. Wallach, you, you, you've got to be embellishing, okay? We just can't believe it's that bad. Well, there's a big article, and I don't know, I think it was the, the uh, New York Times News Service. And it was in every article, and I happened to be in Salt Lake City, so I've, I got the article from the front page of the Salt Lake City newspaper. And it says, um, this is headlines, the front page of the newspaper. This isn't a small article. It says, medical waste and fraud cost American taxpayers $750 billion a year. Now, that's three-quarters of a trillion dollars. Three-quarters of a trillion dollars. And when you go to the first column in the first couple of paragraphs of that article, gosh, what is it? where is that money going? Where is three-quarters of a trillion dollars going every year? Unnecessary treatments fraudulent treatments for Medicare patients. Now, the doctors are walking away with $750 billion, three-quarters of a billion dollars, excuse me, three-quarters of a trillion dollars, three-quarters of a trillion dollars are going in doctors' pockets for unnecessary treatments and therapies of people who are in hospice who are either helpless or in comas, and they're just going steam at it. Johnny, get your guns getting every penny they can. They don't want them to take that money to the grave with them, so they're going to get it, and they're going to do every procedure they can. And when doctors are hungry, when doctors are losing their houses, when doctors' kids have to come out of school and they can't pay their tuitions anymore, doctors game the system. They use the patient as an ATM machine. And you say, Wallach, you got to be exaggerating. Well, look it up. Look at increased hospice costs. Google it. 
look at the fraud, look at the unnecessary costs, and it's all going out of, uh, coming out of the Medicare system. Government insurance, private insurance into the doctor's pockets for unnecessary treatment. For somebody who has days or weeks to live, they do all these heroic things that have nothing to do with quality of life, certainly makes their life worse. And even the poor people, because Medicare will pay them, they will do some extraordinary things on people. Again, they're unconscious, they're helpless, uh, and they're in these hospices, and the doctors come in and get every penny they can from whatever these people, whatever assets they have. Not for the benefit of the patient, but for their own use. It's absolutely a crime. Nobody seems to be paying attention. I'm alerting you. If you have somebody you love, wants to, needs to be in hospice, do it at home. Have the hospice caregivers come to your house. We'll be back with more information after these messages. Okay, Doug, what pearls of wisdom do you have for us today? I thought we'd talk a bit about cardiomyopathy today, as I've got a news story here from ABC News headlined, Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Kills Seven in One New Jersey Family. And this is a woman by the name of Lisa Saulberg, and she says she lost seven family members to this insidious disease, and it was a medical mystery for four generations before they unraveled it. She had a great-great-uncle who dropped dead at the age of 19 nearly a century ago. At age 50, her great-grandmother died of dropsy, which was an old-fashioned term for accumulation of fluid around the heart. Also had a grandfather that had a heart murmur who died at age 43, had an aunt that died at age 36 of, quote, the flu. Another aunt died of a stroke at age uh, 52. An uncle died of heart failure at 48. In the mid-70s, her sister, Lori, was properly diagnosed with what looked like the cause of death for many of her family members, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM, an enlarged heart. Uh, her father was diagnosed in 89 and then died in 2008. And her, she herself was actually diagnosed with cardiomyopathy in 1979. She's quoted as saying, it affected generations of people, and it's everywhere in my family. Her 17-year-old daughter has been diagnosed with it. Also, she has a niece that's 28 diagnosed with it, a nephew age 30 diagnosed with HMC, and several cousins that have it. They go on to say cardiomyopathy is a familial disease that primarily affects the muscle of the heart. A normal alignment of the muscle cells is disrupted, known as myocardial disarray, and it causes disruptions in the electrical functions of the heart. They say HCM is an autosomal dominant genetic condition, according to the lead author here, Dr. Sir Paul Bangalore a professor of cardiology at NYU's Langone Medical Center, and they say an estimated 600,000 Americans have this, and uh, I never thought it was genetic from what you've said. Well, Doug, absolutely, positively, it is not genetic. Uh, this Dr. Bangalore is either a very ignorant guy, of course, there's people who were supposed to be the greatest cardiologists on earth, and they died at age 48 of cardiomyopathy heart disease. Uh, I've actually done 1,200 autopsies on kids under the age of 10 that had died of cardiomyopathy heart disease. It's called Kishan Bin, or Kishan disease, in Kishan Province, China, up in the northeastern corner of mainland China. And it's due to, get this, a selenium deficiency. Uh, we used to have this problem in animals. It's called white muscle disease in calves, mulberry heart disease in pigs, stiff lamb disease in sheep. And it's kind of like a muscular dystrophy of the heart muscle. And, of course, it's totally 100% preventable. It's totally if they survive the first heart attack, because uh, you don't get any warning if they seem to be perfectly normal. In fact, Reggie Lewis, the captain of the team, the Boston Celtics team, died of it when he was 28 years old, Reggie Lewis. And uh, it's a simple, simple, simple disease. We, we have so many young athletes die of cardiomyopathy, heart disease, sudden death. They drop dead because they sweat out nutrients, including selenium. It's an absolute crime that anybody in America dies of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy heart disease. I've written many papers on it. One of them, uh, of course, this classic paper on the 1,200 autopsies of uh, kids under the age of 10. Um, this was in Qishan Province, China, and big universities all over China saved me the material, and I would go do the autopsies. And uh, believe me, this was a huge study published in international journals, both in Chinese and in American things. Now, anybody who wants to prevent cardiomyopathy heart disease, including this poor lady, is not genetic in any way, shape, or form. Uh, they want to um, make sure they're on a gluten-free diet. You've got to be gluten-free to be able to absorb maximal amounts of selenium, so no gluten, no wheat, brother, rye, and oats. It'll solve a lot of other problems. 
skin problems, asthma, constipation, belly pain, that kind of thing. But also it'll increase the efficiency of absorption of selenium. So everybody needs to take the Healthy Start Pack, which has optimal amounts of selenium. And the Healthy Start Pack, one per 100 pounds of body weight per month. But I would also, and I do, I take three of our ultimate selenium capsules twice a day. Written myself from cardiomyopathy heart disease. Anybody who tells you genetic should be put in jail for insurance fraud. It is not genetic. It's a simple nutritional deficiency disease. Man, oh man, either are very stupid or they're criminals, one or the other. I'll give them credit and give them the benefit of the doubt and call them stupid. We'll be back after these messages. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Minnesota and Joan. You're on with Dr. Wallach. Oh, Joan, you're on the air. Hi, Dr. Wallach. My question is about um, a seven-year-old girl who has been diagnosed with ADHD. Um, they want to put her on medications. However, her parents are on a limited budget, wondering what they can do for her. And she has uh, trouble swallowing tablets. So that's Sure. How much does she weigh, you think? She weighs, they said, about 50 pounds. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things we can do for her because most of our stuff is liquids, right? That's one of the beauties of what we do. And so what I would do here is get her off all the bad stuff. Uh, she can't have sugar. She can't have dry cereals. I'd get her on a gluten-free diet. That means no wheat, barley, rye, or oats. Seven years old, she's old enough to understand, even if she's ADHD. Uh, they need to get the CD called Cereal Killers so the child can listen to it. The parents have to listen to it. If they have a dog and a cat in the house, they've got to get rid of the dry cat and dog food. Have to be fed canned dog and cat food, not dry stuff, because they have gluten in it. I got to read labels. I got to learn from that CD um, cereal killers where all the gluten's at. For breakfast, this kid needs eggs and uh, things like vegetables. Maybe some uh, um, baked sweet potato with butter and some cinnamon on it. Uh, other vegetables would be fine. Absolutely. Uh, no cereals, no sugar, no oatmeal, no juice, no fruit. Mm -mm -mm. No, you can get everything you need from vegetables without the danger of sugar in this case. Then at 50 pounds, it's perfect. Uh, get her one healthy start pack per month, and I would uh, divide it in half, and she's going to be that one healthy start pack will last her two months. She's going to take a quarter of a dose of everything at breakfast, quarter dose of everything at dinner. The only capsule there is a soft gel capsule with the uh, EFA pluses in them. If she can't swallow them, you can puncture them and put the um, contents into applesauce or something like that and let her eat it in that manner. Uh, the Osteo X Plus, the calcium, it would be a, uh, let's see here, it would be a teaspoon and a half for breakfast and dinner, and then the um, EFA, or excuse me, the um, uh, BTT, the Beyond Tain Tangerine Nutri Crystals, I'd have her take one scoop at breakfast in a glass of water and one scoop at dinner time in a glass of water, and then... The, again, the EFA pluses, I would have her uh, you go ahead and puncture them and uh, put them into some applesauce so she won't chew them up or swallow them. Uh, but sugar, got to get rid of that. Got to get rid of all the carbohydrates. No fruit, no fruit juices, no honey, no molasses, no agave syrup, no sugar, no grains, no gluten. And we'll be back after these messages. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to England, and Mike, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Mike, Hi, Dr. you're Wallach. on the air. Hi, thank you for taking the call. You bet, sir. I have What's a up? Friend, I have a friend um, that has hereditary coporphyria, and I called before and you wanted a bunch of questions asked, which I did. Mm -hmm. um, his porphyrin levels are like 32,000 plus when it should have been 624 or less. Mm -hmm. um, he, he does have severe... Um, constipation, but he associates it with the um, pain medications. He has chronic inflammation of the sinuses. He says some dry skin on the forearms. Uh, previously, he's had high blood pressure, but now he has problems with low blood pressure. Lactose intolerant. Um, he's not experienced trouble with sunlight, but he doesn't go outside. Um, can't go. He's pretty much in shut in now. Um, mm -hmm. Weak immune system easily picks up infections and catches colds. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing: his grandparents. And parents grew up in the same county, in the same part of the county, um, from where he's from in Alabama. Um, he has constant, repeated chronic kidney stones. Another interesting thing, he has white hair, and all his mother's relatives had gray hair at a very early age, and brothers and sisters, um, and he started graying in their teens. And the doctor said that he needs to be on a diet 
surprisingly, of high complex carbohydrates. Okay. Well, if that's all the doctor told him, the doctor should be put in jail for reckless endangerment. Well, first of all, when a person has white hair, that means they have a raging copper deficiency. Copper is required to make, uh, as a cofactor, to make melanin in the hair pigment, whether your hair is blonde, red, brown, or black. If you have white, gray, or silver hair, you have a copper deficiency. Then, if you have kidney stones, you have a raging osteoporosis, which means you have raging calcium deficiency. Usually doctors will say, oh, you've got to stay away from calcium supplements. No dairy when you have kidney stones. They are totally 100%, no, I'll say that different. They are totally 1,000% ignorant. You have kidney stones because you have raging calcium deficiency, not too much calcium. Dry skin comes from lack of uh, or ratio problem from, but usually lack of omega-3 essential fatty acids. Now, you got constipation, uh, you got dry skin, and, and, which is a omega-3 essential fatty acid deficiency, you got calcium deficiency, you got copper deficiency. Almost invariably, when you see something like this, we have many, many deficiency diseases, uh, you have a gluten intolerance. So he's got to get off of wheat, barley, rye, and oats. No wheat, barley, rye, and oats. How much does this young fellow weigh? Uh, 220 pounds, and he's six foot one. Okay. All right. So he needs to be totally free of gluten. He needs to listen to that CD called Cereal Killers. Cereal Killers. No gluten, no wheat, barley, rye, and oats, no fried foods, no processed meats, no nitrates, and nitrites, and no oils. Hang on. We'll come back. We'll give you a supplement program for him after these messages. Okay. Doug, let's go back to England and Mike. Okay. We got rid of this uh, fella's... Bad stuff, no gluten, no uh, wheat, barley, rye, oats, no fried foods, no processed meats, no nitrates and nitrites, no oils, it means no margins, mayonnaise, and no salad dressings, cooking oils, if eats canned fish, they got to be packed in water, mustard, tomato sauce, not oil. Get rid of all that inflammatory stuff. Then uh, 220 pounds, he needs two healthy start packs per month. That will allow him to have one ounce of the Osteo FX Plus at breakfast and dinner, two scoops of the Beyond Tangerine Nutri-Crystals at breakfast and dinner, three of the EFA Pluses at breakfast and dinner, all that would be accomplished by the two healthy start packs per month. Well, now with a history of kidney stones, I'd have him get an extra quart of the Osteo FX Plus so he can have a third ounce of the Osteo FX Plus at bedtime with a glass of water. Then, because he has the white hair, and um, I would have him take what we call our ultimate selenium. I'd have him take three of those twice a day, not for the selenium necessarily, but for the extra copper that's in there that's going to support and promote a healthy copper metabolism, which includes liver health, red blood cell health, and, and so on. Uh, elastic fibers uh, reduce the risk of aneurysms and so forth. And I'd have him take three of our ultimate selenium at breakfast, three for dinner. That's two bottles a month. Then for the high blood pressure, I would have him take Three of the EFA, excuse me, three of the ultimate daily tablets. As we're going, three of the ultimate daily tablets twice a day. That's one bottle a month because it's a large bottle. This is designed to support and promote healthy blood flow through blocked arteries and support and promote healthy blood pressure. Um, now, specifically for the porphyria, the selenium is going to do a good job because it's a liver problem. And so the selenium part is going to support the liver. And also, um, the de-stress capsules, I want them to have three of those twice a day. That's two bottles a month, and that's also going to support liver metabolism. And let's go with that. That uh, seems like a lot with a lot of dietary adjustments. Uh, no more fish and chips in the newspaper, which is a classic uh, English thing. But um, he may be in the United States. I don't know. And so uh, this is, that's the direction I would go. Give me a call every two weeks. Let me know how this guy does, but he could do extremely well. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Solvang, California, and Frank, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Oh, Frank, you're on the air. Hi, Hi Dr. Wallach. Um, my wife's 49 years old. Um, she hasn't really supplemented for about 16 years since she's pregnant with my daughter. A couple of, a few months ago, she was diagnosed with what they believe to be Parkinson's. And uh, I just from listening to you on the radio, I purchased a couple of your products online, the Tangy Tangerine and... Um, some EFAs, and she had about a 50% reduction in the tremor. Now, she's still, um, um, she's taking those, but I still really know what I'm doing. She, she um, I've been reading a bunch online. I guess she has, she has four amalgam fillings. I'm wondering what, what you would do in this situation. Okay, well, first of all, what does your wife weigh? She is about five foot five, uh, about 150. Okay, 
And let's see, does she have anything else? High blood pressure, diabetes, constipation, no. skin problems, eczema, dermatitis, anything like that? No. She, um, you know, she was, right before all this starts, she was having some bouts with, like, um, depression and anxiety and stuff, you know, so I don't know if that's associated, but. Mm-hmm. Okay. Other than that, um, she's been pretty healthy. Okay, but no history of skin problems or asthma, constipation? Asthma, yes, asthma, uh, absolutely. Okay, how long has she had asthma? Um, well, since known known her. Her. Yeah, yeah, okay, well, guess what? She has a gluten intolerance. That's the basic root cause of all of her problems. She must get on a gluten-free diet. You live in the house, you got to get on a gluten-free diet. Have you had children together? Yes. Okay, all of your children will have a gluten intolerance. All of your children, if you have grandchildren, all that kind of stuff, everybody needs to get on a gluten-free diet. This is absolutely drop-dead imperative. Um, she she passed it on the kids. You don't pass it on. It's not a genetic thing, but it's passed on through cord blood or breast milk. Uh, you need to get a hold of that CD called Serial Killers. You need to listen to that because it tells you all the places, thousands of places that wheat, barley, rye, and oats are hidden. It's very difficult to get away from it, but you, you can, but it's, it's uh, you have to be proactive and really work at it. So get a hold of that CD, Serial Killers. Then um, uh, I would... Uh, uh, get her on, according to her body weight here, well, get, get her off the rest of the stuff. No fried foods, no processed meats with nitrates and nitrites, no oils. It means no margarines, uh, no um, mayonnaise, no salad dressings, no cooking oils. Canned fish got to be packed in water, mustard, or tomato sauce, not oil. Now, at 150 pounds, I want her to eat six to eight eggs a day. we got to repair the brain. We need her to have six to eight eggs a day. They cannot be fried. They cannot be over easy, not sunny side up. They must be poached with the yolk soft. Soft ball with the yolk soft, 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 scramble in butter, not margarine or oils. If you can eat it with a fork, it's too hard. It's got to be eaten with a spoon. It's going to be so soft. That's how you have scrambled eggs when you have Parkinson's disease, MS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, which is ALS. All three will be approached the same way nutritionally. Then, no sugar also, no sugar. Then, from the supplement standpoint, um, I would have her... Take two of the healthy start packs per month. That's one ounce of the Osteo FX Plus at breakfast and dinner, two scoops of the Beyond Tangerine Nutri Crystals at breakfast and dinner, three of the EFA Pluses twice a day. All that would be accomplished by the two healthy start packs per month. The fact that you've seen some benefit from a, a minimal program is very encouraging. Then I would have her take three of the de-stress capsules, capital D like David, dash stress, three of those twice a day, three at breakfast, three at dinner. Um, That'll be two bottles a month. I would have her take the extra Smart FX. I'd have her take nine of those a day. These are the raw materials necessary for the neurons, the brain cells, to make neurotransmitters. Okay, very important here. So I want her to take three at breakfast, three at lunch, three at dinner. That's three bottles a month. These are small, pea-sized, soft gel capsules, easy to swallow. Kids chew them up. They, they taste pretty good. They like them. Also, will support healthy brain function when it comes to depression and that kind of stuff. Um, She's very good about getting on a gluten-free diet and taking all these supplements. Her asthma will go away. This will support healthy respiratory metabolism and function and uh, depression also. And then the anxiety stuff is a blood sugar problem. Usually blood sugar goes up and down very radically, drops and goes up. And um, if this program itself doesn't deal with the anxiety, uh, we can add another thing or two, but I'd rather not load her up too much here. And uh, keep track of her Parkinson's disease. Um, this, it's amazing how rapidly this can, can uh, um, reverse. Uh, I have um, billionaires up in Canada whom I've reversed their Parkinson's disease in 90 days. These are people who were terminal. Uh, they were instructed, the family was instructed to put these guys in the hospice. And in 90 days' time, they can play golf, play the piano. You never know they ever had Parkinson's disease. And, of course, needless to say, they had access to all the free Medical treatment in Canada wasn't doing them any good. Just because it's free doesn't mean it's good. And um, it is a reversible disease. It's a preventable disease. Call me every two weeks. Let me know how she's doing, Frank. Be back after these messages. We're back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS Radio Network. Dr. Joel Wallach here for Young Jivity and the 90 for Life Crusade. And, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Ontario, Canada. Ed Mary, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Thank well, Mary, you. you're on the air. Uh, thank you. I'm calling with regard to my husband's low-grade glioma that he was diagnosed with, and we've been following your supplement um, recommendations, but he's not seen any change in his 
um, daily headaches. He wakes up almost um, every morning with the beginning of a headache, which can go into a migraine um, mm-hmm. unless he stops it with um, ibuprofen and caffeine or Imitrix. Okay. Now, uh, how many of the um, Smart FX capsules is he taking? Do you know? Um, just a couple a day. Okay. Well, I'd have him take nine a day, three at breakfast, three at lunch, three at dinner. Okay. Yeah, Smart FX. That'll be three bottles a month. Um, these are just really super when it comes to supporting healthy brain function, uh, particularly involving migraines, seizures, uh, pressure problems in the brain, and so forth. Um, so I, I would go that direction. You know, he has a life-threatening situation here, and two, or is a, you know, that's not enough for a two-year-old kid, let alone an adult with these kind of problems. So I'd go with nine three bottles a month. That's in addition to what does he weigh now again? Mary, what does he weigh? Okay. Uh, Doug, I think some She's back with us here. She's back with us. 170. Okay, Mary? Yes. I'm sorry. She weighs, he weighs what? 170. 170. Okay. Yeah. So he, again, he needs two healthy start packs per month. Is it right. half? Uh, yeah. A full dose for everything at breakfast, full dose thing at dinner. That's a one month supply, two healthy start packs. I'd get him an extra a bottle of the um, plant minerals right? Um, and have him take, or two bottles, because I want to take an ounce of breakfast, an ounce of dinner, the plant minerals, specifically for the um, gallium that's in there. Gallium. Gallium um, uh, deficiency, according to a lot of English research, increases your risk of glioma, and so it's imperative that you get more gallium, and you'll find it uh, in, in optimal amounts in this particular product, there are plant minerals. Uh, you get a, get a hold of that book, a Rare Earths Forbidden Cures, in Chapter 11 under gallium. It's amazing. The research has been done on that for the reduction in risk, uh, considerably reduction in risk uh, of glioma in young people. So certainly it's uh, worth you know a shot to, to have everything gained, nothing to lose uh, by trying it. And then um, it's imperative that he stay away from all the bad stuff that causes inflammation in the brain. They have even contributed to initiating a full-blown tumor, fried foods, processed meats with nitrates and nitrites, oils, gluten. Stay away from all that. And But I think from the headache standpoint, that sort of thing, uh, the increase in the smart FX is going to you know, solve some of his problems with the headaches. But um, the fact that he hasn't had serious progression of secondary symptoms to the glioma itself um, may be a good sign. Okay, so that's uh, um, a, a positive. Uh, if, you know, uh, so uh, I'd have him eat eggs. At 170 pounds, I'd have him eat you know eight to ten eggs a day, soft scrambling butter, soft poach with soft yolk, soft boil with soft yolk. Feed the brain. Give it the high quality fats, high quality proteins. And the egg is it. So there's nothing that's better than an egg. You know, people talk about certain foods being the you know the, the perfect food. Well, egg is the perfect food. You think about it, you get a, a chick the size of a, a dot on a printed page, and then um, in 21 days it's a full chick all developed from the food that was in that egg. So um, I, I always like people, particularly with brain issues, to eat according to their body weight. Eggs and at 170 pounds, I'd have me eat eight to ten eggs a day. Um, I don't have any problems, but I, I eat uh, eight to ten eggs a day myself. I have them in the morning, and I have eggs again after our meetings at night. Go to one of these all-night breakfast places, and by golly, you can get poached eggs and a hamburger patty, plus all the supplements. Keep in touch, Mary. Thank you, everybody. Great um, questions and testimonies. Thank you so much, Doug and Susan. Superlative job as usual. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our troops. God bless our Navy SEALs. And God bless America.